It's my pleasure to introduce to you Pastor Don Williamson. I think we ought to do this. Go, Don, go. Go, Don, go. Go, go, Don, go. <laughs> well, we know which one's sweating. <laughs> well, it's a good day to be with you all today. In fact, it's a great pleasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, for people that have never been here when I spoke before, uh, everybody was telling me how sharp I looked this morning. I told them it's because I keep a file over my office and I sharpen myself up. <laughs> and, uh, but if anybody hasn't ever come and heard me speak before, if you're uh, fairly new, why, I'll be, uh, I'll be available for pictures after the service. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm willing to sign the pictures, but uh, it'll be a small charge, but it'll be all right. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to see you all this morning. Let's just pray. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for today. It's just a gorgeous day, Father. In fact, every day that you give us, Lord, is a gorgeous day. Because it says in your word, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice in it. Hallelujah. So we give you praise and thanks for this morning. I thank you for your, your beautiful church, Father God, that you provided. I thank you for their, their uh, attentiveness, Father God. I thank you that any words that I speak, Father God, I thank you that they don't fall to the ground. My words are spirit and life. And the words that I speak when I read from your scriptures are life and they are spirit. And they'll go forward and they will accomplish all that you desire to be accomplished. So we give you praise and honor and glory. And I thank you, Lord, for the blessings of the day. I thank you for your Holy Spirit in this house this morning. And we thank you for your guidance and direction in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. If you all turn over in Genesis chapter 1. I wouldn't want to uh, disappoint. I would not want to disappoint Ray's testimony that he gave several months ago about it seems like every time... Uh, I get up and speak, or Richard gets up and speak, we're always talking about Genesis. Well, it's a good book to start because that's the beginning. Hallelujah. So anyway, in this, it talks about the Lord. He said it created the heavens and earth. And then uh, he, uh, he uh, says, God saw the light. He said, let there be light. And he saw the light was good. Well, you can read all down through Genesis chapter 1. And it talks about everything that he created was good. And then on the seventh day, he rested from all his good works or all his creation. I, uh, my uh, youngest daughter, when I hear her, uh, she's got a, uh, on her vehicle, has this saying, uh, uh, Life is good. I see this on a lot of vehicles. Life is good. Well, I'm wondering how good it really is. So my title today is The Good Life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I did look up the definition of the word good from Strong's Concordance. It's to be gracious, joyful, kind, merry, Pleasing, precious, prosperous, and most important, and this is my quote when I say most important, is loving. I know Ray has been sharing with us about love. It's a tremendous thing that we need to realize how much God truly loves us 
and all that he has done for us. So uh, anyway, uh, God looked on all his creation. He checked it out every day, and he said, man, that really looks good. That word good, I think, has more, more meanings than I ever thought about. And sometimes uh, when, I was, when I was doing this, I was thinking how many meanings it had. And I thought there's a lot more, there's a lot more that God wants to reveal about that word good. And uh, so, uh, but I, I, when I was thinking about this, I remembered a, uh, uh, a men's conference that we had several years ago for four C's. We had a tremendous turnout, but one of the speakers there, and he's him and his wife have been here a few times, Kent and Brenda Littlejohn. Uh, Kent spoke about, he, he, uh, he uh, spoke at this men's conference, and he spoke about decisions that we make in our lives. But one of the things that he spoke about was, when we're doing a project or a chore, how good are we doing that, that project or, or chore? Do we just do it? Well, that's good enough. Nobody will ever notice that I didn't do this or I didn't do that. Or uh, I, What I really saw a picture of was uh, like uh, if you've got an office area or you've got a room in your house, and you've been hard to clean, or that's been your job for the day is to clean it. And, and I, I, the reason I thought of this was because I was in a, in a restroom at a, a fast stop uh, 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 station the other day. And while I was in the restroom, I noticed the corners were dirty. Now, I, you could see where the mop had been swung around there. The rest of the floor was okay, but each corner was dirty. There's just dirt there. Couldn't reach it with the mop, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's good enough. Well, that's what Kent was talking about. What kind of job are we doing? A lot of people say, well, nobody will ever notice. Who's going to notice that? Well, let me tell you, God notices everything. He's well aware of what you did, whether you did it from the heart, whether you did it because that's what you're supposed to do. I remember years ago when I was working at the power plant over in Miram, and they sent us out. And uh, my, my, uh, one of my jobs, my first jobs I had, was uh, being a coal scooper. And in other words, they gave you a shovel and said, go clean the coal up. That's spilling off the conveyor systems. And so I had two other guys that I was working with. They were both Christians. In fact, they were part of my uh, Bible study group. I'd go over to Indiana every, uh, every couple of weeks, and I'd have a Bible study over there. Anyway, and so we'd get out, and we'd work, and, and uh, they'd work uh, right along. And uh, the, the one, I remember the one said to me, he said, you know, he said, I have to remind myself that I'm doing this job for the Lord, not just for the company. In other words, I'm so thankful for the job God got me. Well, that all sounded good. It started out well. And then as years progressed, as time came in and they worked with other men, uh, other gentlemen were hired, and uh, these guys... Uh, I guess you could call them slackers. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the minute they got hard, and it always seemed like they were the ones that trained any new ones that came in. They'd take them in, and they'd show them, this is how you avoid doing anything. And uh, so over a period of time, as time went on, these uh, two gentlemen that I worked with, even though they were going to church and everything, they could be sent out on a job. Well, if they could get by without doing it, I'm not doing it. Nobody else is doing it. And, of course, I was, uh, I was supervisor at that time. And I remember talking. I'd have to have a safety meeting every, every two weeks. I'd have to have a safety meeting. And, and I'd tell them, you know, if everybody will do a little bit, nobody will have to do a whole lot. So 
My job, too, was to walk the conveyor systems, check out the uh, different places where the coal was going, see what kind of condition it was in. And so uh, I'd had a, a, a gentleman that I had assigned that day to uh, check out the uh, uh, conveyor systems. And I said, so how do they look? Do they look good? Yep, yep. They're okay, they're great. So uh, I decided that afternoon I'd go up. I thought I'd better go up and check that one system. We've been having a little problem with it. I went up and I uh, go down to the tail end of the conveyor, and it's stacked full of coal. I mean stacked clear to the point it's up in the rollers, hanging clear over on the floor, everything, which could catch uh, as friction builds in the coal and that belt continues, it builds heat, which can cause a fire. Needless to say, the gentleman that had inspected the uh, uh, conveyor system and told me everything was A-OK -okay because then I walked the full system to take a look at it, and it was not A-OK. -okay. Well, needless to say, the gentleman that had done the inspection got sent back to scoop but, of course, I had to send four or five others along with different places to go and clean it. And then I had to go check and see that they were cleaning because I, I knew what some of them would do. So, uh, anyway, uh, uh, one of the guys, uh, uh, my, uh, my uh, supervisor was over me. He had sent one of the, he said, uh, called this one guy out and he said, I want you to go help them. He said, you just go up and help them additionally. They probably need the help. So he comes, uh, he comes in for break. Everybody else is dirt, coal dust. This one guy is as clean as a pen. Supervisor looked at him. He said, you and I are going back after break. He said, I'll go with you. So he took him up. When he came back in that evening, he was black from head to foot because that, super, that senior supervisor stood over him and made sure that he scooped, that he didn't set, that he didn't stay clean. So uh, each of us need to realize that God has called us to do certain things, but God expects the best out of us. He doesn't need mediocre he doesn't, well, I can get by with that. He wants us. He wants us to read his word. He wants us to study it. He wants us to have a relationship with him. It's not just, well, you know, I, I came to church on Sunday. I took my Bible home, and I dusted it. While I was laying there on the coffee table, I dusted it off. And... Uh, I, I told God when I was getting ready Sunday morning, I, I, hope, I hope the service is not long and uh, it'll be okay. Sometimes that's the way things are and that is not the way things should be. This book is to help us in every area of our life. It's to be an encouragement. If we'll read it, we will get the good of the land for our lives. So, uh, but I, I have, uh, I've often remembered that uh, talk that Kent Littlejohn gave and had stuck with me over the years. So, as we study the Word, as you read through it, you'll find that Word is mentioned several times in Scripture, that Word good. God didn't just make up any old plan for us. He didn't just decide, well, you know, It'll all work out. It'll be good enough. I don't have to do much. You know, uh, he didn't say, well, it's not my best work, but I'm sure no one will notice. And it'll be okay. So what if he'd come out here and he'd pick, the, uh, pick somebody up off the street and said, I'm sending you at the cross. You're not the perfect lamb. You're not without spot or blemish. Your blood won't sanctify anything. It won't redeem anything, but who will notice? Where would we be today if we didn't have Jesus? Because he redeemed us. He bought us back. He paid a price. He was the perfect lamb of God. 
Because of God's great love for his children, only the best will do. He wants our life to be amazing here on earth. He doesn't want us to go through life and feel doom and gloom and agony on me. You know, if, if you remember, well, some of you won't remember. Hee-haw was back in my younger years. And, uh, but they always, they always sang that song, doom and gloom and agony on me, excessive misery. And I remember, <laughs> I think, good night. It was funny, but by the same token, you thought, how many people really take that into effect, you know? Uh, but he wants our life to be amazing here. He wants us, he wants to give us good blessings. I, I was thinking about uh, uh, the best of life, the, uh, uh, the uh, I'll think of it in a minute, the class that uh, Mike and Cindy Arney are teaching, the blessed life. Is, and it's, it's a tremendous teaching. It's very good. And uh, if you can avail yourself of it, do, because uh, you'll find it uh, very helpful. And so as we look at God's Word, we see God is not a random planner. He doesn't say, well, this may work, this may not, I don't know. I'll just throw it out there. And if, if it works, if it sticks, good. If it doesn't. Well, things are tough all over. His plans are always on course. He's never running off the rails. He stays on the rails. He's got a plan concerning us. He has a precise plan for each of our lives. The question is, are we willing to spend time with him to seek out what he wants us to do and listen to his voice as he gives us guidance and direction to do those things so that we can accomplish the plan that he has for our lives. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, For he decided beforehand, beforehand, before the earth was created. He decided beforehand. Now this is what, his, what the word says. He decided beforehand to bless us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Even before we were showed up, even before we were in existence, before we breathed our first breath, he had a plan designed for each and every one of us. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy. Holy doesn't mean just being good. Holy means we were set apart for a special purpose in his plan. He has a, I hear people, I've heard people uh, go to churches or they run into somebody, uh, uh, how the Lord's used them and, and they've got a special gifting. Uh, some people uh, are very good in the prophetic area. Others are in the uh, uh, having a word of knowledge. Others, uh, when they pray for people, uh, a lot of things change and happen. And, and, and people say, oh, if I could just be like them, it would be great. And God could just use me mightily. It, or, or they'll get up and have a speaker come. Oh, man, if I could just speak like that, everything would be great. Everything would be wonderful. But the thing about it is, he has a plan for each one of us. Each one of us is very unique. We're very special. And I want you to remember something. It says in the Word that you are qualified by the blood of Christ. His plan, God's plan for you, he has qualified you for, has qualified you to do that plan and to be used of him. Quit looking at somebody else and saying, well, if I, if I was as handsome as he was, if I was as pretty as she was, if I could dress like that, if I could have more money, if I could have a new car, or if I had this and had that, then I'd be happy and God could really use me. You just need to spend time with God and find out, God, what do you want me to do? 
How do you want to use me today? Find out, not telling God, well, God, you know, I've got to accomplish all this. I've got this honeydew list, or I've got all my lists made out. I've got all these things I've got to do. And God, I'd love to spend time in prayer with you, but good night. I've got to get out the door and get going. And I've, I've been guilty of that. Something's going on, you know, and I, man, I've got to, I've got to get, I've got to get right up on top of this problem. I've got to get it solved. I've got to get it done. God, I'll talk to you in a little bit. God's saying, hey, hey, I'm sitting here in the easy chair waiting on have a conversation with you. And I'll tell you what, if you will sit down and talk with me, then I will help you with the situation that you're trying to figure out yourself and deal with out of your own thoughts. He wants to give us great and wonderful things. So, he's planned each of our lives before we were born. A plan that covers from the beginning to the end. You know, we always uh, uh, do that little thing about uh, uh, how, how, do you, how did you spend the, the mark? That little dash, or the dash, from the day you were born to the day you died. How did you spend your dash? Well, I've heard that. But he has a plan for each of our lives before we are born. It's not just about the dash. It says that he had a plan before we were born. He also has a plan after we leave this life. A good plan. Hallelujah. So he's called that plan good. And like I said, I'll just remind you, you might want to read Genesis 1. It might give you some insight. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, We are God's workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God planned for us. God planned the paths that we're to walk. He planned those paths for us to follow even before the foundations of the world, that we should walk in living the good life that he has prepared in advance for us to live. He's got it all figured out. And he's willing to share it if we're willing to spend the time, if we're willing to listen to him. There's a project over here going on over in South Cross. And they've got a little mini park they built behind the post office that had some buildings collapse, and they cleaned it all up. Well, they put a big concrete wall back there. And I came by there the other day, and it was painted. They'd painted it white. And the next day I come back by, and here's a guy over there with a ruler. And he's going all along that wall, taking a pencil and that ruler, and he's marking things all over that wall. I come back the next day, and down on one end of the wall is a painting of a flag and of an eagle. He's an eagle's head. Now, he's having a little hard time because he's trying to find a time when it's dry enough that he can do this. I don't know why, but it just seems like it's working out that way. So, anyway, this artist didn't just slap some paint on it. He just didn't slap white paint And I'll put some red here. I'll put some green here. What he did was he planned. He planned. He asked, what does the customer want for a focal point on this wall? What will the background be? What are the details that need to be in that painting? With a plan... That vision comes to life. Without it, it doesn't. It's just chaos. So I was looking the other day, and I went by again. He was down on the other end of the wall still marking stuff off. But he's got it all laid out. He's got it all drawn out, and then he's going back and filling it in. I guess it's... uh, Follow, follow the lines. Stay within the lines. But anyway, each one of us have a vision for our life, God's vision, 
if we'll spend time with him to find out what he wants us to do. And it's a good vision. I, was, I, was, I may get a little political here. In Psalms 139, 13 to 16, this is what God says about you. And I thought I would really like all the people that signed on to this abortion bill for the state of Illinois, I think they really ought to read it. And then they ought to ask God, okay, God, I read it. Now what do you want me to do with it? I cannot believe, not only them, but all the people across this nation that are for abortion. The right, the right for a woman to govern her own body. Well, if she has the right to do that, don't get pregnant out of marriage. All right, now I've got a political so I can, I'm going to get. It says in the Word, it says, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit together in my mother's womb. You, God, did all that. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was ever born. Every day of my life, I want you to catch hold of this. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every day. And that is something that maybe the people that are voting for abortion need to catch a hold of. Those decisions are wrote down, and he's well aware of what you did. And the thing about it is, the word talks about people that are in authority, whether it be teachers or in government or whatever, that we're all going to be held accountable for what we have done. So they really need to think about that just a little bit. I wish they all would. Anyway, he says, every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day of my life had passed. Every moment. How much time do we waste? I, I look at my life, I look back at all, how, how, many, how much time did I waste, God? I just needed to find out what you wanted me to do. <laughs> I, was, I was sitting there last night after we, we had a men's breakfast Thursday, and it was great. And Tanner did a wonderful job and uh, just really appreciated the word that he shared with us. And uh, it was good. So I got home, and then I got home, and uh, I, my uh, cousin... He lives in uh, Arizona, had come in, and another cousin had sent me a text, said, he's here to sign his books. He's wrote four books. And uh, so uh, I hadn't seen him in about eight years, so I uh, went up, saw him, bought all four of his books that he's got, and he's writing a fifth one now. But it's all based on his great-grandmother's journals. She journaled everything. I mean everything. She wrote it all down. But it's amazing how many people, there were people that came in there yesterday and said, uh, and his name is Curtis, and they said, Curtis, we want to tell you how much that last book you wrote meant to me because I learned something about my grandmother that I didn't know. I didn't know that she was a midwife. And he said, so I called my cousins down in Kentucky did you know that grandma was a, a midwife? Well, yeah, we knew that. He said, I never knew that. He said, I was 29 years old before she passed away. I never knew she was ever didn't, uh, used as a midwife. And they were talking about different things that he had wrote in that book. But they came out of his, grand, his grandmother, great, great-grandmother's journal. 
and he's, he's written about all those. Now, some of it's a little boring, but it's just repetition. But by the same token, there's a lot in there. And she talks about, she talks about uh, uh, how many eggs, how many chickens she had, how many eggs uh, she got, how many eggs she sold, how much she sold them for. And if she'd been around today, she'd have been a businesswoman. But she was in her garden, same way. People would come and buy stuff off of her. And, she, and then at the end of the year, she would tally up all the money that she'd made. And it was just amazing back in that time for her to have made that much money. But she was a businesswoman, she, but she kept track of everything. She'd probably been a real good accountant because, I mean, she kept track of everything. The only thing she didn't keep track of was her husband. He went to town every night, but she never did put in there what he did in town every night. So she didn't keep track of him too much, but she kept track of the money and all the product. So uh, anyway, back, back, back to the teaching here. That's just a little, little side, side uh, bar there. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day of my life had passed. In, in the Amplified, it says, As he embroidered in various colors, we are wonderfully and marvelously made. When I was a child... I did all the wonderful things, you know. I uh, I was thinking about the uh, the rain, and I was, I was thinking about seeing the kids out playing in the ditches and the mud and all that kind of stuff. And I used to do that when I was a little kid. But there were some other things that I learned, and I didn't think they were. Uh, I thought I didn't know that they were a lot of fun. But my mother embroidered. And she taught me how to embroider. So uh, I learned how to follow patterns. Because if you're going to complete the, uh, the picture you want on, that, uh, on whatever you're working on, whether it be a table scarf or whatever, you want it to be correct. I mean, if you're making a picture of a dog, you don't want it to look like a, a dog with a giraffe's head on it. you got to follow the pattern. So I... She taught me how to embroider. I learned how to follow patterns. I learned different stitches. I knew when to use different colors to complete the pattern that was desired. God is doing the same thing with us. He's embroidering our lives for us to complete the plan that he has for each of us. And it's a good plan. Everything each of us need to be, God has designed in us. It's already inside of us. It's ready to go. We just need to tap into that resource. We need to spend time with Him. Here's what His voice is saying. Which way do I need to go, God? What do you want me to accomplish today? I know that I have five pages of honeydew list, but God... I'm asking you, is there something I can do for you today? I'll tell you, it's already written down in his book, if we'll ask him. You know, so God just wants us to remember that truth in Psalms 139, 16. Out of every day of your life before you were born, I made a plan for you, and that plan is good. Remember that story I shared with you earlier? Well, it'll be good enough. God's not like that. He created a special, deliberate creation, complete in every detail. He didn't say, well, that's going to be too hard. It's going to take too much time. I have, might have to think about it. I might have to move my finger, gosh. But think about all the things that he did. He left nothing to chance. He gave great attention to the object of his creation. Great attention to us and his plan for us. You know, you, you look at all the variety of 
what was what was the name of that teaching that we had about the body and the blood cells and all that? We had did a whole v- v- group of videos. In fact, you went and got them the other day to the Truth Project, and it's if you ever you ought to just set through that man. It's great. It just talks about all the wondrous things in the body, how the cells work together, how the blood does, what the platelets do, all these different things. It's just amazing. And somebody wants to say, well, you was just a swamp gas that crawled up on the shore and somehow it all came together. No, God had a plan. That's that's like, I, I I look at people and their pets. How I look at uh, ladies that have have a little dog or a man that has a little dog they can carry that they can hold close to him. And I've got I've got this bear. Uh, he's actually a lab, but he's a bear, and uh, he's a black lab, but he's 130 pounds. And you get him on a leash. I mean, if he decides to take off, you're going to go with him. I don't care how firm your, your feet are planted. You're going to go with him. But I look at all the different dogs. And I was out at Real King the other day. And uh, I don't know how many people had brought their dogs in with them. They were on a leash, you know, had brought them in. And, of course, the store owner has a couple of real old dogs out there. They just kind of wander around, you know. But God made all those because each of us is different. I go out at Walmart sometimes, and I just sit and look at people. And I think, and what amazes me, what amazed me was, and the reason I did that, as I was sitting there, I was looking at all the people and how each one looks different. And I'm thinking, God, how could you do that? I mean, if I, if, if probably if I'd been God, I'd had a mold. We just stamped them out, and they'd all look the same, you know. But God doesn't want that. He wants variety. He loves each one of us. He has a special plan for us. Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes, in chapter 3 and verse 11, in the Amplified, he says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. This is our time, and we are beautiful. Hallelujah. He has planted eternity in men's hearts and minds. A divinely implanted sense of purpose. Working through the ages, which nothing under the sun, but only God can satisfy. Sounds a little bit like 139 Psalms. Things have been placed in us, which he has designed for that, that we will be complete and mature, lacking nothing in the end. God sees our lives from beginning to end. He will help each one of us live in the plan that he has for us if we'll ask him. That's the key. We've got to ask him. In Proverbs in 20, 24, it says, A man's steps are directed by the Lord. They're not directed by his feelings, by his thoughts, by his wisdom. It's only by God's direction that we will know what to accomplish and what to do. And God will bless us beyond measure. Paul says in Philippians 2, 12 and 13, he says, therefore, when you see that word therefore, it means pay attention. I'm going to say something. Pay attention, dear friends. As you have always obeyed not only in my presence. This is Paul speaking. He says, now much more in my absence. So he said, don't don't wait till I get out the door and say, well, we don't need to do all that. It'll be good enough what we do. No, he's saying, listen, now much more in my absence. I want you to continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. God has given us everything we need to complete that plan for us, if we'll ask him. His word, his spirit. The Holy Spirit is not only our instructor, but he is power source in our life. 
Jesus is our Savior and King, our example of the good life. The Lord wants us to let each one of you know that you're not alone, that He loves you, He is willing to be with you, He's willing to sit and talk with you, He's willing to answer your questions. He's willing, if you will take the time to speak to him and ask him, he will show you things that you need to do in your life. Because, as I said out of Psalms 139, those things are written down in his book, and they were written down before the earth was in existence, before you were in existence, God had a plan for you. You are God's masterpiece. You are his good work in, in progress. Let us just avail ourselves of this wonderful God that we have because he sent his best for us. That was Jesus Christ. How can we do anything less than our best? And the thing about it is, if we fall short, we can say, hey, God, I missed it here. I fell short. But God, I know you love me. I know you forgive me. I know that you'll help me. I know that you'll guide me. He loves us so much. Let's just pray. And we'll have some folks with the prayer uh, ministry be over here. If you want prayer after service, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for each one's here. I thank you, Father God, for your people. I thank you that you have blessed us so greatly, Lord. I thank you for each one. I thank you for drawing us close to you, Father God. I thank you that, that you have made a, a way, Father God, sometimes when it doesn't seem like a way. Father, when it seems like uh, the cares of the world just close in on us, you're there for us. You love us. You've provided the answer for each one of us, Lord. We thank you that you had a plan for our life. And Father, we thank you that as we draw close to you, as we spend time with you, as we're willing to ask, show me what you want me to do. What shall I do with this situation in my life? I lay it down at your feet because I can't handle it. I can't change anything through my own power. I need your help, Lord. I need your guidance. And I thank you that you meet the need of each and every one here today. Lord, I ask if anyone in this sanctuary today has not made Jesus, Lord of their life, that you so convict them right now by your Holy Spirit that they would make a decision to follow and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I thank you, Lord, of your love for us. Bless each one. Give them a great week this week, Father God. I thank you that they'll all draw closer to you than ever before. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And you're all dismissed.